Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of OK Zoomer. I'm your host, Aaron Lichtig, Zometry Guy and former Jeopardy! champion. And I'm very excited to be here today with Ryan Kelly. Now, Ryan Kelly is the general manager of the Association for Manufacturing Technologies Emerging Technology Center in San Francisco. And he's also a former colleague. He worked at Zometry and he worked at Make Time, which merged with Zometry back in 2018. So it's great to see uh, someone who, who was a, one, one of my most brilliant colleagues uh, here at Zometry. Um, what Ryan works on, the, the Association for a Manufacturing Technology is a nonprofit trade group that was established 115 years ago to strengthen the US's industrial base. And he's working on establishing AMT's first West Coast facility. And he'll, he'll go more into what he's working on there. Um, and in his spare time, Ryan listens to some really cool music and uh, like honky tonk, disco, and country. He tell us a little bit more about that as well. So welcome, Ryan. It's great to have you. Thanks for having me. It's, it's, it's great to be here. And it's uh, great to catch up with you, Aaron. So first, tell us about the music you're listening to now. Oh, yeah. Uh, I spend a lot of time listening to music, I mean, hours and hours a day. Uh, it's just something that really brings me great satisfaction. And and uh, the music that I really like is is music that most people don't care about or never really heard of before. And in some cases, like with the disco stuff, uh, it, it's actually kind of ridiculed. I guess that could be the same of uh, country, too. Uh, so I dig, I dig deep, kind of you know, go for really dusty stuff, and and the the honky stuff, honky tonk stuff. I'm really interested in. It's just it's just kind of like around the time when uh, cowboys started experimenting with drugs, and really listening to music that was coming out of California, um, Beach Boys, and and like notably like maybe the influence that Graham Parsons of the Birds had on that music, and you just get some kind of familiar twangy sounds and country themes, but just like with all. A, a bit of a psychedelic bent and always with a good beat. So that's that's the kind of stuff I enjoy. And uh, if anybody out there on the internet wants to know more about it, feel free to drop me a line and I'll, I'll send you some tunes. Awesome, yes, please do that. Uh, so what's keeping you busy right now at AMT? Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively new to AMT, although um, I've been involved with AMT for, for several years through uh, Make Time and, and Zometry's involvement with that association. And I've just been in the, in the West Coast for, for a little over six months with uh, uh, wanting to open this facility. And the, the main, I would say, challenge that, that we're hoping to address here is the fact that technological innovation moves really fast. And seems to be moving faster all the time. But the manufacturing industry's ability to adopt these new technologies and implement them is actually really slow. And, and that's uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, not, none of them are, are really technical. None of them are, are too hard for our available technology to resolve. Uh, so most of these seem like they're uh, organizational or um, cultural in some way, and, and a lot of it is, is really just about understanding what technology is out there, breaking down organizational silos, and, and really understanding what the available technology that in other industries has been used to great effect for maybe decades at this point, and, and looking at it and see how it could uh, be more effectively adopted and implemented in, in manufacturing. Okay. Excellent. Now, how did you get into manufacturing to begin with? Well, I was part of the, the founding team of, of Make Time with uh, my, my good friend and former Make Time CEO, Jura Parrish. And before we were working on Make Time, we were actually uh, fabricating weird objects uh, for furniture designers and architects like Zaha Hadid and, and artists basically trying to build the weirdest stuff that people wanted to make and no one else really wanted to make it. Uh, that pushed us into a lot of digital fabrication techniques and had us working with a lot of uh, regional manufacturers. 
chop shops of different kinds. Um, I, I grew up in sort of a manufacturing community and going in and out of factory. So I would say that it was not foreign to me. Um, and then uh, before my job with Make Time, I was working with a consultancy that worked with big manufacturers like HP and, and Canon and, and Xerox and things like that. Um, but it was really this experience working with these regional manufacturers and really looking at the problems that they had. Uh, I wouldn't say problems, but challenges and just realizing how many business opportunities that they, they were there that I really got interested in it. I guess I'm a natural problem solver and there's really no shortage of, of problems to look at, tinker with, and, and try to solve with um, cool business ideas. Nice. Now, you've always been someone who can see around the corners and kind of mm -hmm. see where things are heading. Where do you think things are heading for manufacturing and American manufacturing in particular? And specifically, do you think reshoring will be a real trend that that's going to take hold as many people believe right now? Uh, yeah, excellent question. Um, I, I think that having a strong industrial base is really important for our country and, and probably any country. And it's really become a part of our national identity that we have this strong industrial base. Um, I think what the global health crisis has shown us is that we're not as strong um, or as agile um, as we want to be. So I'm really happy about all of the attention that manufacturing and supply chain is getting right now. Um, although I think that it would be misguided to hope that um, manufacturing just goes back to the way it was in the good, good old days. That we're, we're never going to get there. Times have changed. And frankly, a lot of good has come from our globalized supply chain and the fact that other countries like China and India have really uh, stepped up uh, uh, their game. And, and you see the, the type of built environment that we live in now with uh, iPhones and um, fascinating computers and electric cars and everything like that. And, and this is a result of that. So I would say that uh, simply a, an emphasis on, on bringing production back, um, that's, uh, in, in some cases, it's what we need to do if our national safety and security is at risk. But I don't think that we should look at it and say, well, everything's got to get made here. There's plenty of things that we probably don't want to make here. And there's like a, a, an iron in, in the back of my screen. That's an example of something that's probably not, not any good for us to, to try to win back all the iron production and, and sort of bring it back to the United States. But we, we should be focused on looking at the American industrial base and asking of it, like, what do we want? What do we want it to look like? And from that perspective, and, and this would be, I would say, reflective of AMT's perspective on this position is there's a, there's a, a lot of room for improvement and the creation of, of new paradigms and a lot of ability to uh, use new technologies to develop new skills. There is an abundant demand for uh, young, skilled, technical, problem solving type people, like almost an infinite amount of opportunity. And almost every young person that isn't quite sure what direction that they want to go in, I almost always push them towards manufacturing as a place where you can find a satisfying career. And that's not just shop floor type jobs or technical type jobs, but marketing type jobs, design type jobs, a, a, a lot of things that would, um, I think anybody that's, that's creative and interested in, in building things and solving problems, they can find something really interesting there. And, and that I think is the key to what's next for American manufacturing. It's not necessarily playing the same game and looking at our trade relations with foreign countries as something that we need to react against. Rather, we can keep the best elements of that, but we should be looking forward and looking to innovate and do new things, uh, strengthening our, our manufacturing base and looking at, at new ways of making and whole new categories of products, um, similar to what happened when uh, the United States developed 
smartphone technology and how that changed the world. Um, so I, I think that the, the energy that has been unleashed as a result of the uh, COVID crisis and it's got people thinking about manufacturing and supply chain is really good, um, but it shouldn't be about trying to get back to where we were in the good old days. It, it should really be focused on on what's next and, and how bright the future can be. Um, innovation has is, is always been born of manufacturing, and so investments in manufacturing will lead to these new innovations. Excellent. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for those thoughts and thanks for joining us here today. It was great to see you both professionally and personally. Yeah. And we'll be back with another episode of OK Zoomer in a couple of days. Take care. All right. See ya.